Welcome to the Academy of Photography. You can never exhaust creativity. The more you do, the more you're gonna have. I'm Christian Tudor and today I'm gonna play Rembrandt. Why do I wanna do that? It's because I have seen a lot of very interesting artistic portraits which imitate and um, go to the vintage style in the Rembrandt uh, painting style and I have noticed a lot of professional photographic contests really appreciate that. So what does make it a Rembrandt type of portrait? It's the light and it's also the color, the words and the texture. I decided to give it a go. I will try this with you today. So what I'm gonna do is take a few portraits of myself because I'm a little bit bored of my dummy but I can promise you I'm in the process getting few models so in the future videos I'm gonna use actually live models. As you can see I have dressed up for the occasion this is not a perfect shirt for that but it does have a texture it does have a little bit of color warm color that's how I, what I was looking for. I do not have anything from Rembrandt time I think for the purpose of this exercise this will do just fine. So I'm gonna take a few portraits of myself I'm gonna show you a bit of uh, lighting techniques. We're gonna jump on a computer. We need to use a bit of Photoshop and we'll see how, we, how easy it is to get a result that turn a simple and average portrait, in this case of myself, to an artistic style, which will be probably appreciated by a certain uh, kind of people who like to see a little bit of artistic input. Without further ado, let's start. I have set up my camera here. It's on manual mode. I have a wireless trigger which is going to trigger a flash uh, speed light. This is going to be behind me and the purpose of this one is to actually uh, give a little bit of light on the background. Now the background is a black fabric. It, it's a little bit crusty. The reason I didn't want a completely a black background is because I just wanted to see behind some texture. We're gonna play that with in Photoshop, but as I mentioned before, I just need to have a little bit of light around my face. I'm gonna use a typical Rembrandt style, as the photographers like to call it, the Rembrandt light. What does that mean is I'm gonna have a light on my right hand side or on my left hand side at 45 degrees and high at 45 degrees. Uh, a Rembrandt light in photography terms means I'm gonna have half of my face lit and I'm gonna have a triangle of light here and I'm gonna see the shadow that my nose cast to my cheek, in this case my left cheek. If you wanna study that more, just Google Rembrandt, you're gonna see some samples and you're gonna understand how he used to like to paint his portraits. So this is a Rembrandt light setting and we're just gonna use it. After that, we jump on our computer, do a few Photoshop exercises and we're gonna see the results. I'm gonna switch off my lighting and I'm gonna take a few test shots. Just one thing I forgot, the camera through this cable will trigger the, um, the studio light. So basically I am triggering one light with a cable and the flashlight with the wireless trigger. Now I'm gonna switch off my uh, two lights so I make sure they do not interfere with my lighting setup. One more thing before I start, it is very important if you wanna become a professional photographer to know how to pose people and the first step on that is how to pose yourself. So before you instruct other people how to pose, you might need to try and get some poses yourself. So this is also a good exercise to see how you move because I have noticed in my experience asking people what to do, it doesn't work as showing people what to do with yourself, that will work way better. So without further ado, I'm gonna start. I am going to trigger my camera with a wireless trigger. So this one will trigger my camera. So I'm gonna pose for myself and I will try to get a portrait as nice, taking into consideration the looks. So the flash gun is uh, behind me. The purpose of the flash is just to give me a little bit of light on the background. So doing the 45 degrees, not too much. I just wanna see a little bit of light and I'm gonna keep my head straight to the camera. Camera is on manual mode with the autofocus control. So the camera will actually focus on myself. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Mm -hmm. 
I believe this is it. I'm going to jump on my computer and I'm going to show you the result. As mentioned before, we need a little bit of uh, Photoshop knowledge because I'm going to play with some layers. Okay, jumped on my computer. This is the result. On top of that, I just wanted to have another JPEG which is, uh, which is with a bit of texture because I want to blend this texture in. As you can see, we just want to make it look like an old painting. So I found a piece of wall on the back of my house with a very untidy finish. Uh, this is basically uh, on, uh, an external wall. I took a photo and uh, it was a little bit bluish but I played with that white balance until I got this yellowish result. So what now we're going to open them in Photoshop, both of them in the same time. And we're going to bring this one as well. So we have two files in opened into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select a view that allows me to see them both and I'm going to drag uh, this texture on top of this one and I'm going to switch this off, close it, close it and we are remaining with only one file. So basically we have two layers here. Okay, so this is the layer on top and this is the layer on the bottom. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to ignore the layer on the top and I'm going to play with just layer uh, adjustments until I'm happy. So what, I'm, what is my intention is to bring it to a yellowish outlook. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play with this brightness and contrast until I'm happy. There's no recipe for this, you play as long as you're happy and it, it uh, makes it look good into your own eyes. So you don't have to follow any any particular recipes you do as long as you're happy and that's about it. So this is brightness and contrast but in order to get it to a yellowish effect I'm just gonna go and uh, play again with the uh, color balance. Alright so I'm just gonna turn this dial to yellow until it becomes yellowish and probably the science will be towards red these are the mid-tones we can play with the heart with the shadows again the shadows could be yellowish as well until we get to a specific look that gets closer to a vintage look anyway I leave it with you you can play as much as you want that's about it you play with the color balance brightness and contrast and the simple things until you are happy the next step is turn on this layer and this layer right now uh, we are playing with the blending mode that means we are defining what type of layer this is at the moment it's a normal layer but we're gonna choose a soft light so what that does is basically adding the texture of the layer onto the bottom uh, portrait. So at the moment we're just gonna use a mask. We can use the erase tool. It's the same principle. We're just gonna delete what's on top only on the face. We're gonna leave uh, this texture blending in to the background but what I wanna do is just get the texture out of my face. We have two types of, uh, of tools. Either we delete it or we can actually apply a mask which is probably safer because we can revert to it. So I'm going to apply a mask to this layer and right now I am making sure that the foreground is black and I'm going to pick a tool uh, with a normal size and I'm basically what I'm going to do now I am going to remove through the layer mask test technique I'm going to remove uh, the texture on my face only so I don't look I don't have the texture on the face so we'll do it until we are happy. Okay, basically this is it. Maybe a little bit of cropping because I've got too much. And probably what I want to do, let's crop it first. So I want to have just a smaller image. I want to get rid of my hand. And probably try to make it with rule of thirds just gonna crop it, image crop, this is where we go. Unselect and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna add one more uh, one more thing 
I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to use the gradient from black to transparency just to try to darken the corner a little bit more to make it even more dramatic. Probably too much. I'm just going to decrease the opacity and that's about it. I'm very happy with the result and I would suggest you're trying to do the same. Just play with the image until it becomes yellowish and words to your liking. Apply a texture, just make it overlay and uh, delete the texture on the face, on, on the portrait. That's about it. I'm just going to move back now. I hope you enjoyed today's exercise. If you decide to do it yourself, feel free to share the results if you like them on the Academy of Photography website. Please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and especially on the website. You will be part of our newsletter. It's coming out, out once a week and we're going to get great tips and uh, great videos like this and other information for anyone who loves to take pictures. Until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting. Thank you for watching.